gathered with your palm crosses. I was uh, just realizing this morning that last year we actually sent you videos, people at home, on how to make a palm cross. So we'll uh, see if we can post those same videos for you when this um, service is posted as well. And uh, we've sent you a liturgy and it begins with, with the um, Palm Sunday liturgy, the congregation gathering with palms, which Baxter is now going to lead us through. Hosanna to the son of, of David. Let's say it together. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the, the son, son of David, David the, king the king of Israel. Israel. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to com complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Now raise your crosses and I'll pray a prayer of blessing over them. Let's stand. Eternal God, bless these palms to our use. Grant that we who have received them may ever hail as King and love as Saviour, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We have a reading of the Gospel. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 to 42. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our Saviour. And it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent his two disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat, loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus. And they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as they now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had been, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that even if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make your peace, but now that they are hidden from your eyes. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ our soul. Let us have a moment's silence and before we confess our, our sins.
We say together, Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, in penitence in we confess that we have sinned against, against you through our, through our own fault, fault in thought, thought word, word, and, and deed, deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our, our Lord, forgive us all, all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the colic for today, for Palm Sunday. Eternal Father, your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ, fulfilled, fulfilled your will, will by taking, taking our nature and giving his life for us. Help us to, to follow, follow the example of his humility by walking in the way of the cross through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the world that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious, I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Lord, the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me, who will condemn me. They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31, verses 14 to 16. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. A New Testament reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning and welcome on Palm Sunday. A little bit of the change of the service with the blessing of the Psalms and the Gospel as the first reading. And I think there's something quite important in that the Gospel comes first. We've just completed five weeks of the Lenten program, the Lent program around living holy and healthy relationships. And especially in our awareness and the redress of the scourge of gender based violence. And of course, Palm Sunday is the start of Holy Week. Holy Week that leads, leads us up to Easter Sunday. And if you look at the readings today, Isaiah was around the Lord helps me. And you can look at how the writer was saying men were scourged, but that was very much the suffering that was seen in women through the Lent course. In the psalm, was talking about trust and the blessings of God. And the Philippians reading, emptying yourself of yourself so you can actually be available to God, available as Christ was to God. And of course, that glorious Luke reading, the glorious celebration of Jesus entering into Jerusalem, seen as the Messiah, the first day of this week, the first new beginning. And of course, Palm Sunday was only really ratified into our traditions in about the fourth century. But you can just imagine those early days, the waving of palm branches, the waving of olive branches, putting your cloak down on the ground as a sign of absolute respect. So as we approach this Holy Week, I'd like to take us back to the beginning and look at some of the women influential throughout the Bible history and influential ultimately in Jesus's life some of whom we met, we, we met through the Lent course. And in that we really need to recognize how women have influenced who we are and what we are in this world. And the New Testament begins with the book of Matthew. The first chapter of Matthew describes the genealogy of Jesus. 42 generations from Abraham to his son Isaac and henceforth through the line of David to Joseph and of course ultimately Jesus and in those 42 generations only five women are mentioned Tamar not the Tamar we met in the Lent course Rahab Ruth Bathsheba and of course Mary to whom Jesus was born Jesus was called the Messiah so we wonder the just how important these women were as we look at them in the context of the Lent course. Tamar was a Canaanite married to the son of Judah. And this son of Judah abused her mercilessly. And upon his sudden death in the Leveret law, she was passed on to the second son. And the second son, understanding Leveret law, refused to have intercourse with Tamar. He refused to respect her as a woman, to respect her as his wife by giving her children, because any children of hers by him would go into the line of his brother. He would have no heirs. And ultimately he suddenly dies, not that it was any fault of Tamar. But Judah's now in a quandary. He has a third son. And having his first two sons die, he refuses Tamar the right to marry his third son. He refuses the right to, of Tamar to bear children, to fulfill her duty, to fulfill her covenant as a married woman. And she is sent back to her family, humiliation and shame heaped upon her. But this is a woman worthy of her faith. And she looks at the Le Levitical law and it returns to Judah the father. And so she seduces Judah and she falls pregnant. And Judah does the right thing, and the line of Judah continues. And that continues through to Jesus, ultimately. Tamar was betrayed by the men who controlled her future, but she fought for her right to believe in a loving God. And this is the same Judah who, with his brothers, went to Egypt, where we again meet Joseph. Joseph, who had been restored after his encounter with Potiphar's wife. Again, abuse of power. Rahab, the second story, was a harlot in, Jeru in Jericho. And Jericho was being evaded <clears throat> by, 
by Joshua and she hosted Joshua's spies. And in recognition to Joshua's spies, people of the faith of Israel, and recognizing the evils of Jericho, she sought God's protection, which was granted. She was saved. Rahab stands as an example of faith and became the wife of Salmon and the mother of Boaz. Rahab was a woman with a past to whom God gave a future. She was uplifted. And the story of Boaz continues. With Ruth, there was a widow Naomi who had no male heirs, and having no male heirs, she had no rights. And yet her daughter-in-law, Ruth, chooses to remain with her, irrespective of the condition. And this loyalty is noticed by Boaz, who ultimately uses the same leveret law to marry Ruth, and which, levit which legitimizes his love for her. Ruth had a closer relative who was entitled to her, and there was a plot of land. And Boaz said to this closer relative, don't you want this land? It was good quality land. And the relative was all keen, and he said, what, in terms of law, you have to then take Ruth as well. And he said, mm -mm, no, not interested. And so Boaz was able to use the very same law that was abused to his advantage. Ruth gave up everything, expecting nothing, and God honored her. Bathsheba was sought by David in lust. Her husband Uriah was murdered. Her first son by David died. Yet their second son was Solomon. Bathsheba's beauty stirred the passion of a king, and her pain moved the heart of God. And on David, the curse prophesied by Nathan continued with the death of another of David's first sons by another wife. Amnon is killed by his brother Absalom, and this in revenge for Amnon's rape of their sister Tamar. And in that story, even worse, is Absalom's command to his sister, a victim of rape, a survivor of rape, to be silent. And finally, Mary could have faced the scandal of her pregnancy. Here's a woman, betrothed but not yet married, pregnant. Much as the first story of Tamar, a widow who's pregnant. And much like Bathsheba, who is pregnant by David, her husband is at war. There is scandal there. Yet Joseph stood by Mary. Joseph said, I believe in my God. I believe in my betrothed. I believe in the truth of what this is. And so to Mary was born Jesus, the Son of God, to the Virgin. And then importantly, the very simple declaration by Joseph that Jesus is my Son instantly restores and inserts Jesus into the line of David, into the kingship of David. And so despite this very patriarchal Bible, these stories are recorded, even if they expose the brutal, casual brutality of men, and certainly those of positions in strength, and summarizes much of that abuse of patriarchal abuse of power. And each week through the Lent course, we've examined the Bible through a different lens, a lens of love and light. And these five unlikely women changed eternity as they're recorded in Jesus' genealogy. To quote from A Lineage of Grace by Francine Rivers, Tamar was betrayed by the men who controlled her future, but she fought for her right to believe in a loving God. Rahab was a woman with a past to whom God gave a future. Ruth gave up everything, expecting nothing, and God honored her. But Sheba's beauty stirred the passions of a king, and her pain moved the heart of God. And Mary, all eternity had been waiting for this one moment. God chose one woman, Mary. And the Jesus we know would not have been it if not for the recorded presence of this woman. 
placed there by God for a purpose. And we are grateful for their sacrifice of faith. And their stories stand in stark contrast to the biblical stories of wars and idolatry and oppression and ungodliness of many recorded men. And Jesus was the culmination of Old Testament prophecy. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus challenged the prevailing culture and the prevailing law in his treatment of people, especially as he embraced those on the margin of society, as seen in the final Lent story of the woman accused of adultery. She was insignificant, a pawn used by the Pharisees, and is somewhat similar to the very first story of the Lent program. The Levite's concubine, who is seen as non-existent, who is simply sacrificed. Jesus restored the adulteress, the woman accused of adultery, to her humanness. And I would believe God rest restored the concubine. And we've seen through the Lent course the humanity of God's image, the love of God's nature, the solidarity of God's presence, the integrity of God's morality, and God's compassion in restoring the soul. And we have two views of the law. The absolute law, the law that is sometimes abused. The law the Pharisees invoked when they said to Jesus, arriving on Palm Sunday, celebration of glory, rebuke them. And Jesus says, no, the rocks themselves will come up in glory. And we look at Boaz, who acted correctly in the law in love. We look at Jesus acting correctly in the law in love. And I so we look at ourselves, that we act correctly in the new commandment, in the new law, in love. So returning to Palm Sunday, the euphoria and the celebration of laying down palms was the absolute confidence to act in complete faith. This was the Messiah. No doubt. A unity of purpose, perhaps reflected in 1945, Victory in Europe Day, the Berlin Wall, the release of Nelson Mandela, Rugby World Cup 1995. These outpourings have power to heal communities, to move society. Jesus' presence moved history. And perhaps something like the Lent course where we open ourselves up to people's suffering, will also move our society. And even as he approached Jerusalem in celebration, Jesus wept. Jesus was aware of the cost he was about to pay in obedience to God in his death. And he was obedient to God because it was obedience to all humanness, all humanity, all creation. And as I said, Jesus stood as a stark contrast to the blindness of the law and society, to the full humanness of God's creation. And Palm Sunday remembers the glory of Jesus. The great are revered. And we can look at Jesus. We look at the first Tamar who stands by her faith. We can look at Ruth who is uplifted. The hidden is revealed. Christ's glory is revealed to the world. And so I would hope as Tamar's suffering, the Tamar who was raped, Rahab who was a harlot, she has a hidden gem and that is uplifted. And the suffering are restored. For God's kingdom is here and fully, yet not fully here. And perhaps these stories of women do enable us a reflection to do what is right. And so from this week's creed I pray, Dear God, Jesus fulfilled your will by taking our nature and giving his life for us. Help us to follow the example of his humility by walking in the way of the cross. Dear friends, keep the faith, be a disciple of Jesus in both thoughts and actions to all humanity, for all are human and all are of God. Amen. Amen.
Well, thank you, James, for that complete navigation through the past five weeks of our Lent program. You've brought us from beginning to a complete navigation of a very difficult program. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to, to share before the Lord at His table, let us join in a time of, of prayer. Father, we approach this week of Palm Sunday with, with much mixed emotion, often wondering where are we in that crowd? Are we too standing and praising and waving our palm branches saying hallelujah, hallelujah to the Son of the Lord Most High? And yet as we've journeyed through this past five weeks, the Lent program has challenged me with many different perspectives and reflections, Lord. We're reminded in the beginning of your perfect and pure plan through Adam and Eve, where you've equally yoked man and woman into this perfect plan of your creation, giving us the dignity that we need to move forward as your anointed ones. But yet we come along and we mess it up in our inhumanity. And you come along, Lord, and again you remind us through the powerful stories of David and Bathsheba and Naomi and Ruth of how our selfishness, our greed, our needs, our wants draw us away from you. And yet, just as you showed love to Naomi and Ruth, you continue to patiently watch and draw us through this journey. Again, you come along and you remind us of the awful events of Tamar, the violence, the anguish, the culture, the indifference. And yet you remind us again, Lord, that we are all parts of the same body and that we belong to one another and that we need to draw together in solidarity. And we reflect, Lord, on the beautiful teaching which sometimes is very difficult for us to internalize when we look at Joseph's life, a man of integrity, a man who is in so many ways just like David, a man after your own heart. And yet he is caught up in this vicious web of, of, of deceit and betrayal of Potiphar's wife. And yet you again remind us of his honesty and his integrity and his sense of purpose of knowing that you are Lord and that in you alone he trusts. And as we draw close onto this final week, we are reminded again of our own selfishness, our needs and our wants. And yet we rejoice in this beautiful song of Mary, as James has reminded us, that although through all this guilt and this sin that we come before you feeling rejected, yet your love remains. You restore us through the power of your love the power of your love of your son upon the cross who says father forgive them for they know not what they do so lord we we come to this 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 time of, of reflection on palm sunday asking where are we in that crowd and as the week goes on before us we often think where are we when we hear the crowd shouting out crucify him where are we as we come before your very throne of grace as you lie upon that cross, bleeding, bruised, and yet through the very stripes on your back, we are healed. So Lord, we come before your throne and we ask for all that you have planned, ordained for this, your church, the Ecclesia, O Lord. You have called us into this world as the anointed ones to share your glory, to share your praise, to share your word so that we may bring glory to you, Lord, that we may be there to reflect your image, Lord, in your creation. So we think of our community of St. Martin's, Lord, and we again are reminded of the hustle and bustle of construction vehicles, knowing that there is change upon our doorstep and that you are bringing revival, you are bringing renewal. Prepare us for this journey, Lord. Prepare us as we go forward into the mission field 
But most important, we gather here as your church on this day. We ask that you will hear the prayers that are being sent to you. Hear the hearts and minds that are crying out to you for wisdom, for nourishment, for comfort, for guidance, for company, for healing. Lord God, you are a God who heals. We think of all those in our parish who are in need of healing. Draw alongside them through the power of your Holy Spirit to guide and to protect them. We lift up Tavo, our Metropolitan, Steve, our Bishop. We lift up Mark and Paul and Brian and Hilary. And we lift up James and Joe as they lead us into this Holy Week. A gift in itself, but stop and help us to remember each day as we go through this week of Holy Week. Where are we in those masses? Where are we in the crowd? Where are we at the foot of your cross? We surrender ourselves now into you in this time as we prepare to come before your table, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody, for a wonderful sermon, for wonderful prayers. Let's stand for the peace. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. We turn now to the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. We say together, you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we <coughs> might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, in remembrance of him, his blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son, by faith. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Now as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. to the body of Christ. Amen. James, the body of Christ. Lucia, the body of Christ. Amen. Michael, the body of Christ. Amen. Now give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. We say together, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to You as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to Your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please do join us every evening this week at 6.30. Uh, we have some meditations on the labyrinths with James in the garden. Um, we have with Bishop Brian a meditation on the ascension in the church together with some music and some pictures and then on Wednesday evening at 6.30 someone and myself we'll be doing a creative exercise in create, uh, making psalms, psalm making and worship. Um, on Maundy Thursday of course as usual at 6.30 we have the Maundy Thursday service without the foot washing but we will have the stripping of the altar, turning off the lights as we flee into the darkness in remembrance of the disciples fleeing Jesus' arrest. And then on Good Friday at 12 o'clock, a one hour service, a Eucharist, um, some scriptures, intercessions, a sermon, and then a Eucharist from the Reserve Sacrament. I hope that you'll join us in all of that. And then, of course, on Saturday, uh, we'll be cleaning up the church in preparation for Easter Sunday, which we hope will be a true celebration at 5 30 in the garden in the morning. 7.30 in the church, the lighting of the fire, and then at 9.30 a family Eucharist. There will be no evening service. I hope that you will join us every night this week and every day. 
We now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.